Hi YouTube, here to talk about today a little concealed carry topic. A lot of people don't realize how, how huge of a responsibility uh, carrying, carrying a handgun on your person is, is in general. They just don't understand that you really do have to become a new person when you carry. If you, I guess if you haven't already been a pretty mild-mannered person, there, there are still things and aspects about concealed carry a lot of people don't think about that they don't realize. So we'll, we'll address those today. So I have concealed carry, learn the mindset. What are the most important aspects? Well, first we'll go through these, okay? Situational awareness. This is a thousand times more important than carrying a handgun, period. Um, I have here to stop being glued to your phone or some magazine or a newspaper or whatever. Um, it's situational awareness is as easy as taking a look around occasionally, just to you know, just to kind of assess what's going on, what, what what's happening around you, because most of the time, uh, most crimes where people get mugged and stuff like that, for for the most part, what I've read about is typically this person probably could have seen the crime unfolding before it happened if they'd been paying attention. You know, a, a woman walking down the street glued to her iPhone, tweeting all day. Someone runs up and snags it. There you go. It's gone. She wasn't paying attention. Uh, you know, somebody walking through a dark alley, uh, you know, glued to their cell phone in the, in the dark, walking alone to their car. Car randomly pulls up, mugs the person, and then leaves. Well, they probably could have seen that if they had, you know, giddy up, got the lead out, and got to their car. Or if they just hadn't had their phone, you know, in their face, their eyes glued to it. I see this so many times in public where um, it, I, d I doubt a lot of these people carry, but just in general, uh, people are so absorbed in the things that they're doing that they're not paying attention to what's happening around them. It creates a really big disconnect, and it's just a lot harder to you know take responsibility for your safety and carry when you don't pay attention to what happens around you. Because generally, the ultimate goal is to not have to use your gun, but to have it there if you do need it. You don't want to use it, and if you have situational awareness, your chances of using it are a lot lower. Um, also, responsibility. The law forces you to stay in check. Uh, you as a law-abiding citizen, you have the responsibility and the burden of carrying um, a firearm on a regular basis. You know, someone says, well, why do you need to carry this? Well, why does it matter to you? Because it's, I'm the one carrying it, it's on me. I'm the one that has to carry this, this hunk of metal and plastic in my waistband and you know be slightly uncomfortable and it's it's my responsibility it's not up to you uh, you bear the burden of carrying on a regular basis and i also say here i believe as a concealed carrier you have a responsibility to carry a majority of the time i have 90 percent there uh you know if your job permits it whatever you're not in a stupid gun free zone but i'll, I'll get to that later uh, you should carry as much as you can. You can't predict when danger will find you. It could find you anywhere. It could find you in your front yard. It could find you on the road driving down the street. It could find you anywhere. And it's, it's up to you to be ready for that. Um, I have a seatbelt analogy here because you don't get in your car sometimes and say, well, you know what, I think I'm going to drive a little bit more dangerously today, so I'm going to wear my seatbelt. Uh, you know, you always have it on. It's a preventative measure. It's to prevent you from being hurt more if you were to get in an accident. So. Carrying a handgun around is a preventative measure. You don't expect to have to use it, but you have it there in case uh, someone decides that day that they want to go rob someone and they'll kill someone in the process to take what they have. It's a preventative measure. Calm mindset. This is extremely important. Concealed carry has no room for tough guys. It's, uh, it's up to you to defuse situations before they get out of hand. In Louisiana, this is enforced by, by law as to who's the aggressor. I'm not sure the exact you know, uh, the number code or whatever it is of the law. But I do know if you're seen as the person who uh, was the aggressor and who escalated the situation, it's probably going to bite you in the ass in court. Um, at times, this may be impossible. So, you know, if you're uh, in an altercation with somebody and they immediately pull out a knife and start charging you, they've already made the decision there to, to you know, put your life on the line and put you in grave bodily harm. And you know, there's, there's not much you could probably do to talk them out of it at that point. So uh, at times this may be impossible. So when do you draw? Well, the, if it's a you know, life or death situation, you're risking extreme bodily harm, getting beat to death, whatever. Um, if you're in danger with no escape, and I, I say that, that, that's not backed up by the law in Louisiana. In some states you have a duty to retreat. 
where you should move on if you have no choice. And I still think you should move on if you have no choice here. It's just that the law will protect you a little bit more. I have it depends on your state. In Louisiana, it is protected by stand your ground. And there are a lot of other pro-gun states that do have a stand your ground, reasonable man, and castle doctrine that will help to protect you if you, you know, do have to defend yourself one day with, with lethal force. So it really depends. But uh, for the most part, people around you shouldn't know shouldn't know it's on you at all unless the situation was to unfold when you need it. So do you get involved in conflicts involving others? And this is a, this is a pretty deep topic because, uh, you know, it, it really depends on the case. You can assess it on a case-by-case -case basis, as I have written here. Personally, I would because I believe we as concealed carriers have a responsibility to defend other good people. If you're walking down the street and you see, a, you know, it looks like an abusive man just beating his wife, you could drive away from that situation and not get involved, but personally, I feel like, you know, that guy, uh, it, that woman deserves the freedom to not, you know, be beat all the time and, you know, be under that. And that that guy needs to serve the penalty for doing something like that. It's just abusive, you know? Uh, sometimes this can be difficult. My best advice would be to defuse a situation if possible. So, uh, you know, you see some sort of other little conflict. I've watched some other videos where someone said they simply stepped in to resolve a conflict without without letting the person know that they were armed. So they just went in as any old uh, Joe Blow civilian, but, you know, didn't make it seem like they were armed. If you do this, you need to be you need to be assertive. You don't necessarily need to be aggressive, but you need to be assertive so that people will take what you're saying seriously. And if you do step in, into a situation and you defuse it without anybody knowing your arm, that's great. That's, that's, the best, that's the best thing that can happen. That's the ultimate goal that you're striving for. Uh, if the situation did somehow get out of control, well, then it's up to you to decide when to draw and if you actually should pull the trigger. But personally, I believe if, if, it's, gonna, if it's gonna come out of your, uh, off of your person, out of your holster, and the other person has some sort of weapon, you should probably use it. But, you know, if the person is unarmed and you know, whatever. Case, case by case basis, this is why concealed carry gets so difficult sometimes because we as concealed carriers have to assess the situation immediately when a robber has decided a long time ago that he wants to commit a crime and is going to do it anyway. So we have to bear that burden. Uh, I have it's ultimately up to the armed individual. So you may not want to get involved in other conflicts. That's fine. I personally believe it's my duty to protect other good people. But you know. And I have what about gun free zones? Well, as a law abiding individual, it's your responsibility to follow the rules. Uh, I advocate for action to remove the laws of this kind, so refer to my Gun Free Zones video. Uh, if you're in college, there's a great organization, Students for Concealed Carry, if you want me to link it in the description I can, that uh, is working to remove these gun free zones around the United States because with the, enact with the enacting of concealed carry and the sheer number of concealed carriers and the decrease in crime, these uh, gun free zones are pretty outdated and they really aren't relevant anymore. Uh, and I have at the bottom here, as James Eager always says, your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends. And that refers back to what I said as you, there's no way to predict danger and it will find you. Uh, you know, if it wants to, it's going to find you. If somebody feels like killing that day, they're, they're going to go to lengths to do it. And if somebody wants to rob another good person and they take you as a good person, they're going to do it. So be ready to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have questions, uh, post them in the comments.